Okay, fam, welcome back. So today we're going to be going over LTCN and the rest of the Grayscale Trust. And I will also want to go over earnings and um, election predictions with you guys. So with that being said, let's get it. Okay, so I just recently watched a video from, uh, I believe it was elections time, if I'm not mistaken, stating that uh, basically, as far as the votes are concerned for the Electoral College, it does appear that Trump is going to win the presidency. Which, if I'm being completely honest, assuming that is the case, would not shock me at all. Again, I do still plan on voting for Trump. Um, Everybody that I know, with the exception of one person, is going to be voting for Trump. And yes, I do have a friend who is a Democrat. Believe it or not, I'm not, you know, I'm not a rhino. I'm not a hard hard right winger kind of person. I do have friends on the other side as well. Uh, So, point in case here is... If it looks like he's going to win, he's probably going to end up winning. So that's all i got to say about that. I'm not too worried about the midterms uh, this time around. Um, in 2024, I'm more so concerned about who's going to be president. I think that matters the most in this situation. Again, for a good economy and for a crypto president, Trump is your guy. I can't convince you guys, but you know, based on the research that I've done and I've been doing this for a very long time, that would appear to be the case. So the next thing I want to talk about is earnings. So, by the way, Trump winning the presidency is extremely bullish for crypto. Okay, I think it's more bullish for crypto than any other candidate that we could get, especially. I mean, nobody wants Biden. Let's just be honest about it. He's been doing nothing but trying to kill crypto ever since he got in office. But any other candidate would not be as bullish as Trump for crypto, in my opinion. So the next thing on the list here is going to be earnings. Okay. So earnings did actually kick off last week. I'm not going to go too deep into it, but you can see the earnings here. This is, again, the NASDAQ earnings. So we had JP Morgan, Wells Fargo. You have some others, but you have uh, mostly the banks. Okay, You got Bank of New York Mellon. They're obviously very large and very well established. Uh, BlackRock, you have uh, Unity Bank. You have some other banks here, lots of different banks. Uh, A couple outliers like Progressive and whatnot. Um, But earnings is going to continue on through next week. Okay, So we can look at some of the different names here. So you got more banks, Goldman Sachs, B of A. I'm, I'm expecting them to have beats. Pretty much almost all of these to have beats. Johnson Johnson, United Health. Um, a lot of these are dividend growth stocks and very large multi-billion dollar companies. Um, Omnicom, Interactive Brokers, Albertsons, Walgreens. Uh, you can keep going on to, down the list here. I mean, there's more and more and more for Tuesday. And then you have Wednesday, Thursday, Um, I believe Thursday is when we start getting a kickoff of the actual tech earnings, if I'm not mistaken. So you got another bank, Morgan Stanley. There is your uh, semiconductors right there at the top. Uh, So I did notice that we have Netflix here as well. Netflix is obviously going to be a big one. I mean, people watch movies all the time and, you know, stream stuff. Most people spend a lot of their evening time just chilling out and watching movies. I do. I also do on occasion, too, when I have time. Uh, So it wouldn't surprise me if they had a beat. Then you got like insurance companies, another bank. Uh, just keep kind of keep on going down the list here. See if I can find any of the really big ones. Alaska Airlines, we do have a call debit spread on that. Expecting that to be. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing. Too, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of big companies here, but I'm not seeing too many that would like really. I think they will all move the market in some way, but we're looking for like the big tech, really large, large companies that are going to move the market. Um, but in my opinion, pretty much all of these will move them at some point. So I can go keep going here. More banks. Uh, you got Procter & Gamble. That's obviously a big uh, dividend growth company. And yeah, so I, I guess that's pretty much it for the, that week. Um, so here's what I'm thinking. All right. So between the elections and earnings season starting this week, in my opinion, between now and elections and going through elections, we're going to start the bullishness of the markets pretty much right now, okay, or very close to in the future from now, okay, because again, earnings could be that catalyst that's going to kick off the next leg of the bull run for both stocks and crypto. That is what I'm expecting. We are going to into Q4 bullish seasonality, which usually sometimes starts in October, sometimes not. Sometimes October is a little bearish, sometimes is bullish. This time around, it's been mostly flat. I'd say that's actually a good thing because again, we are moving we moved up and then went flat, which is usually an indication of a continuation at some point to the upside. Uh, we're also in Q4, which is bullish during, the, especially during the having year for crypto. Okay, so there's that. Um, another thing that you guys might want to know, in my opinion, okay, to each their own, 
But the best time to do something like a call debit spread is during the earnings season. And the premiums for cash secured puts and cover calls do tend to be pretty high for earnings as well. Um, so if you were looking to put up some or you know, either test out a strategy for um, call debit spreads or the wheel, or you're actually looking to do them, like seriously do them like we are, um, going probably a few, two to three weeks before the earnings of the company that you're looking at may be your best bet. Again, that's not financial advice, but that's generally speaking how we would do it and how we are doing it. Um, there is a reason why we took positions earlier, and that's because the technicals kind of told us it was the right time to get in, but to each their own. All right, so LTCN, we're kind of sitting along this trend line here. Pretty, I'm pretty much looking for one of two things, okay? Either a breakdown of the price, which in my opinion is not going to happen. Although I would say this candle is actually pretty ugly. It doesn't, <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest, it doesn't really look pretty. That's a pretty large red candle. Um, but again, this could be the final shakeout before the eventual rip. Um, the one thing I will say about this, it does kind of look like a bear flag. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it does kind of look a little bit like a bear flag. But again, um, as far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't really call this a bear flag per se. It could be, but I highly doubt it. Reason being is because we already have a break of the trend line on the RSI. We're about to get that MACD golden cross. Um, and usually what the markets will do is they will try to They'll, they'll give one last major dump, like you can see right here. See this big dump before eventually ripping? They'll do something like this to get you out of your position and then take off to the moon. Okay, that's, again, that's market psychology. That's how the markets work. They try to, this is stop loss hunting right here. This is basically them trying to hunt for stop losses, which, you know, that combined with short selling can and people basically freaking out and panic selling their positions can kind of lead to a cascading effect down. And then eventually the price gets moved back up. Okay. So in, a, in my opinion, that is what I think we're seeing right now. All right. So you got 1178 to roughly about 15. Again, in my opinion, I think that would be a good buy zone. Um, it could go maybe as low as 10, although I don't, it would have to get below that line to make that happen. I'm not sure that's going to happen. So uh, bear market support, 640 to $8. Uh, actually, that is not the bear market support. My bad but it is the next level. So if you're worried about it, then there's your level right there. So 25 to 27, and then we have 54. And of course you have 75, hundred to 135, three to 400. And then 510 is the all time high. And we have in terms of the Fibonacci retracements, you know, a maximum price of like 2,200. It could easily go higher than that. Um, I'm not going to say it couldn't. I mean, this is crypto. Anything is possible. So 125%, 360% move here. BCHG. Um, this one, not so much looking like a bull flag. This actually looks kind of like an inverse head and shoulders. I don't know if you can see it, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Um, and again, that is a bullish pattern. It usually plays out bullishly. So support here, 470 to 580. You got your resistance there at 10 and a quarter still to 1280. And again, keep in mind the all-time high for this is 60. So 18 to uh, 20 and 24 all the way up there at the highs. So just from this white line down here, we're looking at about 158, 315% and roughly 385%. Um, and do keep in mind, you know, uh, last cycle, if I'm not mistaken, I remember like a lot of people on TikTok were talking about Dogecoin and like, oh, how if you do this, you do that, you know, it could go to the moon. Like we could see these kind of returns and all that stuff. And, you know, I saw it, but at the time I was kind of like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then Next thing you know, Dogecoin is ripping from five cents to 75 cents. And I was like, holy crap, dude, is this really happening right now? Fortunately, we actually did have some Dogecoin. We bought it two tenths of a penny. So basically we got like, I think the maximum move, maybe a 380X or something like that. But uh, just to see it actually happen based on hype alone was incredible. Believe it or not, guys, a lot of a lot of what happens in crypto is driven by hype. I do think these Grayscale trusts can go to new all-time highs. It's just a matter of how much momentum is going to get behind it, right? The more people that talk about it, the more this thing, more interest comes into this thing, the more it's likely probably going to pump. Um, and again, you got to remember back when Dogecoin was a tenth of a penny to two tenths of a penny, the market cap was almost non-existent. It was very, very small. I don't remember how small it was. It was tiny. We'll take a look, look at that in a separate video to kind of gauge on that. But it was very, very small. It was much smaller than it currently is. 
uh, maybe not even a hundred million market cap. So a lot of these people that buy into these meme coins, that's one of the things they look at how small the market cap is. If they see that market cap small, like tiny, like 10, 20, 50 million, or even a hundred million, they're going to be like, Oh, let me just go ahead and ape into this. And then, you know, look for that hundred thousand X or whatever. And, uh, in the case of people that bought into Dogecoin, if they did sell at the top, they made, a, they made bank. So it could happen. All right. So H uh, MACD golden cross about to happen here. So we got 350 to kind of uh, 410 here at support. And then you have seven to roughly about $8, $8.10, somewhere in there at resistance. And then 10 and a half up at the swing high. Measured move here, we're looking at about 125 to 193%. Again, we go over the max profit targets in a separate video. ETCG, we have a descending triangle here. There's a bearish pattern. I'm not saying this is going to break down. There is a chance it could go to the upside, but the higher probability is that it does break down. And again, ETH is not going to gain dominance on Bitcoin until Bitcoin gets its new all-time high, which in my opinion is not likely probably going to happen until somewhere around November, December of this year. So Ethereum may start moonshotting maybe in very late December, early January, somewhere in there. Ethereum might, might start trying to take the cake at that point, and then we may see these start to fly off the handle. But in the meantime, they could bleed a little bit. Uh, this one could bleed a little bit before eventually going up. So anywhere between roughly about $740 to $10, in my opinion, is a steal. So you got $1325 to $16, $18 to roughly about $20 um, at the resistance top up there. So you're looking at potentially maybe as much as a 2x. So 112% to 163%. And again, that is not the all-time high. That's just kind of a local level. We talk about the maximum levels here in, in separate videos, but you can see the all-time high previously was about $95. So from the current price is actually still more than a 10x. And that's if it just goes back to all-time highs, not price discovery. If it goes to price discovery, maybe a 15, 20, 30x. Okay, so ETHE, a potential W pattern here going on. You can see there's a gap that needs to be filled right there, which means that likely the price is going to go up again. That's, I would expect as much. We're going into basically the end of the having year. That's always bullish. So support here, 1860, resistance 2350 to about 28. And then that cup and handle target, 47. So the moves here would be roughly about 52%, all the way up to 157%. And you see your nice big cup and handle there. I don't know if you guys have seen the one that the cup and handle that played out on gold, but it took an entire decade for that cup piece to play out. I uh, I did notice that a few years ago, and I actually bought a serious amount of silver and gold during the pandemic lows. Wish I would have bought crypto instead, but still made some money on the metals. So it wasn't a bad idea. Just, just so you guys know, the strategy that we use that we talk about in our monthly macro videos does work for the metals. You just really got to be willing to be patient. You have to be willing to be patient and sit on your hands until you get the right price. And then once you buy on that dip at the premium opportunity, just like with crypto and stocks, you got to be willing to sit on your hands again to wait to take profit for it to get back up into the sell zone. It's just unfortunately patience is a virtue. I hate using that, but it's the truth. So GBAT, about to get that golden cross on the MACD. This one is moving up off of the... Uh, Support here, again, we have kind of this W-ish looking pattern. It's not perfect, but it doesn't matter as long as it plays out. It is a W. That's all that matters. So 460 to 520 support. Resistance 780 to 10 bucks. And 32 is um, going to be the all-time high up there. So we're looking at roughly about 105% and 570% respectively. FILG. So this one is still sitting in support. You can see we're about to get the convergence of the golden cross here and the histogram is about to turn green. We're getting very, very close to that happening. Um, whether it starts moonshotting immediately or not uh, remains to be seen. It doesn't have to do so. You can see it kind of slowly grinded up here before eventually really starting to rip uh, weeks into the bullish convergence. So it could take a little bit of time still. Do keep that in mind. So 36 to 43 at support there. 400 to get it was basically at the all-time highs so we're looking at potentially about i'd say somewhere between 850 to about a thousand percent pretty good gain i mean if you had a thousand bucks and you made a 10x you know you make ten thousand dollars essentially okay gliv 1210 to about 1450 and then the 
all time high up here is 80. This one's pretty straightforward. There's no patterns that I can see on the charts. So it's basically point A to point B, B here. So 520% move. Uh, G link. So we got support here, 38 to about 45. You got that resistance there, 66 to 85. Again, there is a potential for a W pattern here. It's kind of ugly. Uh, I would have liked to see this green leg go straight up here, but we're not seeing that yet. And then the all time high up here at 220. Measured moves 105% and 444%. GSOL, this one is already moving up. Uh, whether we're going to get that spot Solana ETF or not, I don't know. Uh, I do know this. If Trump gets elected, which it looks like he's going to, and that's been our prediction for almost two years, believe it or not, we've been predicting this for two years. Even before, long before we ever created this channel, we've had that in mind that Trump was going to be reelected in 2024. We'll go about that more in depth in a separate video, but since 2022, that's been our mindset. So, uh, yeah, I think Gary Gensler is going to get fired on day one. And I think we're going to get a pro crypto, um, sec commissioner who probably will approve this Solana spot ETF, which if you hold Solana, that's what you want, right? So 300 to 350 support all time high up here at 580. And that's about a 93% move. Again, it's not much, but G's Hall could easily go to new all-time highs. I mean, it's pretty much been sitting at all-time highs for eons. I don't see any reason why that can't happen. All right, so we got a little wick down here. That's a little concerning, but again, it could just bounce pretty much right off the top of that support. You can see it did it before, okay? We got this big fat red candle here, and then boom, got that little wick down to try to fool people and be like, oh yeah, we're going lower. And then, oh, psych, just kidding. And then we went up into this rising wedge and price kind of just went up. And people thought it was going to dump, and that was actually the perfect time to get in. So if you're worried about it, I'd say anywhere between 1180 to potentially maybe as high as 20 is kind of a good buy zone. So the levels here, 14, 70, 20, 50, and then 23, 50. And again, markets are notorious for faking people out. Trust me, when I trade futures, I do get faked out. Sometimes it happens, even with the best traders. 53 to 58, and then you have 70 there. Um, I do want to make it clear that trading and investing are two different things. If you're a hodler and you're trying to hodl for the peak of the bull run, you are considered to be an investor. You are not considered to be a trader. A trader is anybody that buys and sells a position in a time frame shorter than one year. Okay, That would be a swing trader. A day trader does it on a daily basis. So 312%, 390% move. Mana. I do think this one has massive upside. I think this is not even close to the peak. Again, mana is going to be like a... The, the gaming sector and the metaverse sector, I think, are going to be big narratives in crypto. I think the three biggest, in my opinion, are going to be AI, meme coins, and D-Pin. But I think right behind that is going to be the metaverse and gaming. I'm just going to call it now. We'll see if it happens. I don't know. That's just kind of what I'm thinking. But I do think those are going to be the five biggest narratives in crypto this cycle. So, and RWA could be up there too. I don't think it's going to be as big as the other five. So, uh, 10 and a quarter support, 17 to about 2050 at resistance. And then you have 70 at the all time highs. Again, I don't think 70 is actually going to be the true peak on this one. So, 92%, 550%. Okay, so Zcash, nice big long accumulation here. Again, it's not doing much. You can kind of see this channel going sideways between the white lines. Uh, that's what's known as accumulation. Uh, that's usually when whales are kind of buying in here and saying, oh yeah, it's not doing nothing. So let me just go ahead and buy and scoop some up at these super cheap lows when everybody else is like, oh yeah, this thing's dead. I don't care. I'm not going to buy it. It's not going nowhere. Oh, I'm never going to make money in crypto. You know, th those kind of pessimistic people generally, you know, they get burned in the space and then they never come back or they do come back when the gravy train hits. Maybe they make some money, but then they don't sell when prices get elevated and then they get dumped on by the rest of the market and then they kind of blame everybody else. That's kind of usually those kind of people do that kind of stuff. Uh, but whales look at this and see, they see this as a golden opportunity. It's like, dude, it's cheap. It's massively off all time highs. Hasn't moved yet. Going sideways. Uh, you have about a more than a 10 X to get back to the all time highs. They're, they're seeing this and thinking like, Oh yeah, this is a, this is a cash cow right here. Let me go ahead and buy this before it goes back to $30. Uh, so that way, when it gets to $30, I can take profit, right? So $330 to about $6 there at that support. 
local level here, roughly about eight dollars to nine seventy, and then ten, I'd say about ten and a quarter to ten and a half, going to be that swing high up there. So we're looking at two hundred fifteen percent, two hundred forty percent move here. All right, so that wraps it up. Um, hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.